Maybe this is a chance, though, to have Sarah read for us a, a bit of your work so that we can all get a sense for what it is that you write. I'm not going to read from VI, and I'm not going to read very long. My, my books are complicated and setting. I'm only allowed three minutes, so um, <laughs> it would take that long to set up the backstory. I'm going to read from a short story, and because this is a food evening, this is a dinner party, a taste of life. I'm going to read just little fragments of it. Daphne Rader worked in the bookkeeping department at Rapilec, Inc. Her capacity for work, her appetite for it, was insatiable. In January, when accountants go mad closing previous year's books, Daphne flourished. Everyone at Rapilec loved Daphne in January. Flowers appeared on her desk and chocolates. In February, these blandishments disappeared and Daphne lived alone behind her barricade of ferns. She was smart, she was willing, she was capable, but she was also very fat. <laughs> Daphne was an excellent cook. She could make elaborate French dinners, including elegantly decorated pastries. Food and wine were so outstanding that her co-workers longed for invitations and would exclaim at their hostess who barely touched her food. How could she be so fat when she scarcely ate? After they left, Daphne would pull another four portions from the oven and devour them. <laughs> Daphne's present condition was sad to those who knew her as an elfin child. What had happened? Family friends blamed her mother, Sylvia, who was a top model. When Daphne was born, Sylvia delighted in the photographs, hovering sentimentally over a white-clad infant only enhanced her popularity. But as Daphne moved from infant seats to kindergarten, she became an encumbrance. If the child was growing up, the mother must be aging. So Sylvia force-fed Daphne and turned her into the fat woman that she is today, or was today. However, one day into Daphne's life came a beautiful young accountant, Jerry, and they fell in love, and Daphne lost weight, and they she actually was able to buy clothes in an actual dress shop instead of making them for herself. Sylvia arrived in Chicago and was just furious. Daphne in love, Daphne getting thin, no. So Sylvia seduces the poor unfortunate Jerry away from, from Daphne. And uh, the morning after Jerry hasn't come home for the night, well, Sylvia's courtship of Jerry was long and difficult. She postponed winter plans and stayed in Chicago, hosting parties, making a splash at all the society events, getting Jerry to escort her when Prince Philip hosted a dress ball at the British consulate. <laughs> and then the morning that Jerry hasn't come home all night, Sylvia shows up at the apartment to get his clothes. Buzz off now, Daphne, and finish your cookies. Sylvia snapped, slapping Daphne across the face. Daphne picked up the dressing table lamp and began pounding Sylvia's head with it. <laughs> Sylvia fell against the dressing table, dead long before Daphne stopped screaming and hitting her. <laughs> Finally, Daphne's rage subsided. She collapsed on the floor by Sylvia's body and began to cry. Jerry would never come back to her. No one would ever love her again. She wanted to die herself, to eat and eat until she was engulfed by food. Mechanically, methodically, still weeping, she lifted Sylvia's left arm to her mouth. <laughs> Thank you.